Scene script? Have you ever wondered what led to the catastrophic defeat of the Mughal Empire at the Battle of Karnal? Picture this. The year is 1739, and the world is watching as Nader Shah, the founder of the Afsharid dynasty of Iran, is steadily rising to power. His conquest of eastern Afghanistan is complete, laying the groundwork for his next ambitious move, an invasion of the Mughal Empire. His name echoes through the valleys, over the mountains and across the plains, instilling a sense of dread in his enemies and hope in his allies. On the other side, in the heart of the Mughal Empire, Muhammad Shah, a ruler known for his ostentatious lifestyle and indifferent attitude towards state affairs, finds himself facing an imminent threat. The news of Nader Shah's imposing march towards the Mughal capital, Delhi, sends ripples of fear through the empire. In response, Muhammad Shah rallies his troops, gathering an extremely large force in an attempt to counter the impending invasion. His empire, once the envy of the world, now teeters on the precipice of a battle that could change the course of its history. Soldiers train day and night, the clanging of their swords and the thud of their shields echoing through the imperial city. The air is thick with anticipation and uncertainty. As Nader Shah's forces move south, Muhammad Shah leads his massive army north. The Mughal force, impressive in numbers but lacking in agility, grinds to a halt at Karnal, a city located a little over 68 miles north of Delhi. The stage is set and the actors are in place, waiting for the curtain to rise on a battle that would be remembered for centuries. In the shadow of the impending conflict, Muhammad Shah could not have possibly foreseen the scale of the disaster that was about to befall his empire. He was about to face a military genius in Nader Shah whose tactical brilliance was unmatched. Little did Muhammad Shah know his cumbersome army would soon meet a crushing defeat. The stage was set near Karnal, 110 kilometers north of Delhi. What was about to unfold was a tactical masterpiece. Nader Shah, the founder of the Afsharid dynasty of Iran, had meticulously planned his invasion of the Mughal Empire. His military prowess and strategic acumen were about to be put to the ultimate test. Nader Shah's forces were primed and ready to engage in a battle that would alter the course of history. As the two forces faced off, the air was thick with tension. The Iranian army, though smaller in size, was a well-oiled machine of war. Nader Shah had a keen understanding of the battlefield and was able to exploit the weaknesses of the Mughal army, which was larger but cumbersome and less organized. The battle commenced with Nader Shah's forces launching a ferocious assault. The Mughals, taken aback by the intensity of the attack, struggled to mount a coherent defense. Nader Shah, an astute tactician, had deployed a strategy of divide and conquer. His forces split the Mughal army into smaller, manageable chunks, isolating them from each other and making them an easier target. Nader Shah's cavalry, renowned for their speed and agility, were instrumental in causing chaos in the Mughal ranks. They rode around the battlefield, causing havoc and confusion, disrupting the Mughal formations and breaking their lines. This strategic maneuver created openings for the Iranian infantry to exploit, driving a wedge further into the heart of the Mughal army. The Mughals were unable to regroup and counter the Iranian onslaught. Their larger numbers became a liability as their movements were restricted and their command structure confused. The battle was over before they could mount a significant resistance. In just three hours, Nader Shah's forces had routed the Mughal army. It was a decisive victory that showcased Nader Shah's military genius and strategic brilliance. His tactics were ruthless but effective, demonstrating a deep understanding of the art of war. In just a few hours, the fate of the Mughal Empire had been sealed. The battle was over, but the real impact was yet to be felt. With the dust of battle settling, the enormity of the defeat began to dawn upon the Mughal Empire. The once mighty force was crushed in a mere three hours, and the Mughal Emperor Muhammad Shah found himself at the mercy of Nader Shah, the founder of the Afsharid dynasty of Iran. In the wake of the catastrophic defeat, a series of negotiations ensued. Muhammad Shah, desperate to maintain his rule over his lands, agreed to pay a large indemnity. But Nader was not content with mere financial compensation. He sought to establish his dominance to make a statement that would echo through the annals of history. And so he forced the Mughal emperor to submit utterly and marched him to his capital, Delhi. 
Here, the Mughal treasury, the symbol of the empire's wealth and power, was laid bare for the Persians. The city was plundered, and the wealth of the Mughal empire flowed into the coffers of Nader Shah. But the plunder was not the only horror that Delhi would witness. An uprising against Nader's soldiers by the citizens of Delhi was met with a swift and brutal response. The city was sacked and a bloody massacre ensued. The streets of Delhi ran red and the city was left in ruins. The enormous plunder gained in Delhi had a profound impact on Nader Shah's reign. He issued an imperial decree removing all taxes for a total of three years. It was a move that further solidified his power and the Persian army soon departed, leaving behind a city and an empire in tatters. The aftermath of the Battle of Karnal was a sight of devastation and despair. 30,000 dead, a city plundered, an empire humiliated. The Persian army left, leaving behind a Mughal empire on the brink of ruin. This marked the beginning of a rapid decline for the Mughal empire, a decline that would eventually pave the way for European colonial rule in India. The Battle of Karnal wasn't just a military defeat, it marked the beginning of the end for the Mughal Empire. This devastating loss didn't merely signify a military setback, it was the harbinger of a rapid, unabating decline for the Mughal dynasty. The immediate aftermath of the battle saw the once mighty Mughal Empire critically undermined. The Mughal treasury in Delhi was plundered, leaving the empire's coffers empty. The Persian army under Nader Shah left behind a trail of destruction and a death toll that reached 30,000. The Mughal Empire, already in a state of decline, was pushed further towards the precipice. The repercussions of the defeat at Karnal were felt far and wide, as the Mughal Emperor Muhammad Shah was forced to concede all his lands west of the Indus to Nader Shah. But the effects of the Battle of Karnal stretched beyond the immediate loss of territory and wealth. The defeat at Karnal shook the very foundation of the Mughal Empire. The psychological impact on the Mughal court was profound. The aura of invincibility that once surrounded the Mughal emperors was shattered. The prestige and authority of the Mughal emperor were significantly diminished, leading to increased political instability and internal dissent. In the long run, the defeat expedited the decline of the Mughal dynasty. It was a blow from which the empire never truly recovered. The loss of vast territories and resources left the Mughal Empire weakened and vulnerable, hastening its fall. In the grand scheme of history, the Battle of Karnal was a turning point. It marked the shift of power from the declining Mughal Empire to the emerging powers of that time. It's even speculated that without the ruinous effects of Nada's invasion of India, the European colonial takeover of the Indian subcontinent might have come in a different form, or perhaps not at all. The Mughal Empire, once a beacon of power and prosperity, was left critically weakened. The Battle of Karnal wasn't just a military defeat, it was a pivotal moment that marked a sea change in the course of history. The aftermath of the Battle of Karnal reverberated far beyond the borders of the Mughal Empire. This battle, this decisive victory of Nader Shah, had profound implications for the geopolitical landscape of the time. It was a shockwave that sent tremors across continents, influencing the course of history in ways that are still felt today. The decline of the Mughal Empire following the Battle of Karnal created a power vacuum in the Indian subcontinent. This vacuum was eventually filled by the European colonial powers, most notably the British East India Company. However, it's worth pondering, what if the Mughal Empire hadn't been critically weakened by Nader's invasion? Historian Axworthy suggests that the European colonial takeover of the Indian subcontinent might have taken a different form, or perhaps not happened at all. The Mughal Empire, had it remained strong, could have resisted the encroachments of the European powers, altering the course of colonial history. The Battle of Karnal also had significant ramifications for the world economy. The enormous plunder that Nader Shah took from Delhi, including the famed Peacock Throne, was so vast that he removed all taxes in his empire for three years. This influx of wealth into Persia undoubtedly had a ripple effect on the economies of the region and the world. On a broader scale, the Battle of Karnal and its fallout underscore the interconnectedness of global events. A battle in Haryana, north of Delhi, influenced the balance of power in the Indian subcontinent, which in turn affected European colonial strategies 
global politics and world economies. In essence, the Battle of Karnal was not just a military confrontation between the Mughal Empire and Nader Shah's forces. It was a turning point, a moment that rippled through time and space, influencing the trajectory of empires and nations. In the grand scheme of history, the Battle of Karnal was a pivotal moment, not just for the Mughal Empire, but for the world as we know it.